You're watching DC News Now at 10 and breaking now. Five people found dead inside of a Maryland home. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Fasmeen Mafu. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Flanagan. Charles County deputies say five people were shot inside of a home in La Plata, Maryland. Our Dave Laval joining us now live from that scene. And Dave, still an active investigation. Tell us what you're learning at this hour. Well, it's still an active investigation here. We still have some deputies on the scene. We are at the intersection of Wildfire Drive and uh, Chaff Way. It's this is where this is the farthest that you're allowed to drive up into the area. The crime scene itself is about 200 yards behind me. Earlier this evening, we did get a chance to grab some video. Let's go ahead and show that to you as we tell you how all of this played out today. It was around four o'clock when sheriff's deputies said they and La Plata police officers responded to the single family home for a report of a shooting. When they entered the residence, they found five people dead. All of them had been shot to death. Investigators are working to identify the victims along with their relationships. Um, for those involved, or rather for everybody involved here, not just law enforcement officers, but also neighbors, it's been a very traumatic time, and especially for those who are working the investigation. Earlier this evening, we had a chance to hear from the public information officer of the Charles County Sheriff's Office, and here's what she had to say. It's a very traumatic scene, not only for the people who live here, but for the officers who arrived and found what they did. Um, and again, we just ask that um, people will give us a call if they have information and just keep the community in their mind and their hearts. And one of the things that we are still waiting to find out is who is responsible for the shooting? Is it one of the people who died or is that person still on the loose? And that's information that is going to come out over the next few hours. Meanwhile, uh, Charles County Sheriff's deputies are the lead investigators on this investigation. La Plata police are assisting as they try to find the cause for what happened at this home about oh, a little over six hours ago. As we said, this intersection is closed to cars right now. However, people who live beyond this intersection, they are allowed to park their cars as deputies will escort them to their home. And this scene is expected to remain very active for the next several hours. We're live in La Plata, Dave Laval, DC News Now. Dave, thank you. Of course, we'll bring you any new developments as they come into our newsroom. Also breaking tonight, D.C. police are calling the killing of a 15-year-old boy targeted. Yeah, so this was a scene outside the Washington Convention Center around 5 p.m. We're told police drove up to the area and found the teenager with multiple gunshot wounds. He later died at the hospital. We're also hearing from police that one suspect ran into an alley and shot at a group of people. He then took off from that alley and jumped into a gray Mercedes. Take a listen. It's a disturbing trend to see so many of our youth uh, being involved in these petty disputes where they end up introducing a firearm uh, into this equation and then for some reason think that it makes sense to kill the problem, to kill whoever the young man is. And so we, we definitely got to do something about that as a community. And police are still looking for a gunman wearing a black hoodie and black pants, white shoes, armed with two handguns. They're also looking for that gray Mercedes Benz. It has front end damage to it. Anyone with information should call the police. And developing tonight in Prince George's County, a deadly double shooting at a giant grocery store in Oxon Hill. Police say a security guard and a suspected shoplifter shot at each other. Both were killed. Our Dave Lavelle has the details from Eastover Shopping Center. Gunshots erupted inside the lobby of the Oxon Hill Giant Grocery Store Friday morning. Prince George's County police say shoplifting triggered the shootings. During this encounter, the adult female removed a handgun from her backpack. The woman, police say, opened fire. The security guard shot back at her. He died at the scene. She at a hospital. Police needed just moments to respond to the crime scene as they did not have far to travel. A police station is located inside the shopping center. 
Police said they chose that location to improve safety in the area. We're asking the community to partner with us even more to try to stop these violent, brazen attacks that are occurring in our shopping centers. It's very troublesome, very, very troublesome. Kenneth Davis lives near the shopping center and shops at Giant. I worry about, you know, of course, my daughters who I have, you know, they come over here all the time to shop and myself and my wife. You know, it's just, you know, you never know when it's going to happen. This is broad daylight we're talking about. In Oxon Hill, Dave Laval, DC News Now. All right, new developments. There are just a few days left, of course, until Election Day. Yeah, and at one large candidate, Alyssa Silverman is denying allegations that she misspent uh, campaign donations. Yeah, our reporter Mario Carbone is live at an early voting site in Georgetown. And Marielle, the Office of Campaign Finance investigated Silverman after an opponent filed a complaint about her. Yeah, that's right. And the office did say that it found evidence that she did, in fact, misuse campaign dollars uh, that were actually taxpayer dollars. Now, today she went to the Board of Elections office appealing that decision. It was all focused on one thing, whether or not her due process rights were violated during the investigation. She broke the law. She cannot be trusted as an elected official and she needs to step down. The calls for at-large council member Alyssa Silverman to step down continued Friday, this time outside the Board of Elections office. The trust and taxpayers' dollars went down the drain and were used in something illegal. According to a ruling by the Office of Campaign Finance, Silverman's camp misspent campaign dollars when it funded a Ward 3 telephone poll, a race she is not in during the Democratic primary. That poll caused several candidates to drop out of the race. Silverman participates in a district program that matches small campaign donations with city dollars. Program rules say funds cannot be used for any purposes other than the furtherance of the participating candidate's nomination or election. That is a, a clear-cut example right before our eyes of what voter suppression looked like. Silverman appealed the ruling to the D.C. Board of Elections, claiming her due process was violated as she did not have sufficient time to respond during the investigation. OCF breached an agreement it made in writing regarding the timeline of this investigation. The office says no such agreement was made. Silverman, and we granted this respondent, this petitioner, three extensions. And even to date, they have not provided a response. I will make a motion to deny. The Board of Elections denied Silverman's appeal. It's quite clear to me that there was no agreement. Silverman is required to repay more than $6,000 to the office. And this is just one part of Silverman's appeal. There is another part to this. She does not believe she misused or misspent the funds in the first place because she says those polls did in fact help her because she used them to decide who to endorse in that Ward 3 race. So that'll be taken up at a later time after the November 8th election night. Uh, Silverman in a statement said in part, I look forward to the board scheduling a full hearing on my appeal of the OCF ruling. Reporting live in Georgetown tonight, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News now. Marielle, thank you. DC News Now is your local election headquarters. Tuesday, of course, is Election Day, but you can still vote early if you live in DC, Virginia, or West Virginia. In DC, early voting runs through Sunday. In Virginia and West Virginia, early voting runs through tomorrow. Yesterday, by the way, was the last day of early voting in Maryland. Yeah, so on Election Day, DC and Maryland polling centers will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. In Virginia, they'll be open from 6 o'clock in the morning up until 7 in the evening. And in West Virginia, they'll be open from 6.30 in the morning to 7.30 p.m. You'll be able to vote as long as you're in line by closing time. And if you're mailing your ballot, regardless of where you live, they must be postmarked or placed in a designated ballot drop box by 8 p.m. on Tuesday. All right, if you're going out to vote this weekend, uh, you know, throw on the shorts and maybe flip-flops. I love the sound of that. We got Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb here. Janessa will be near 80 degrees. Yeah, you got to love that for the first weekend of November. It's a rare situation that's unfolding across uh, a good chunk of the nation along with the DMV. And so our high temperatures today started to show out, but they're not at their apex. And I really start to see that tomorrow afternoon into your Sunday as well. 75 for 
for an official high for uh, our nation's capital. So that's nearly 25 degrees above average for this time of year. So we are seeing uh, this southerly flow picking up even for Manassas 76, uh, Leesburg in the lower 70s across the board, just above average weather that continues to happen. Uh, the change, though, tomorrow that you're really going to start to notice is that we have more clouds that will filter in. So I'm not going to tease you with this forecast. Just going to put it all out there. 77 for tomorrow. Overnight lows. They're very consistently in the 60s uh, Saturday and Sunday. And then we'll watch our lows uh, Monday start to drop. Look at Monday. Really keeping this uh, on my radar. Currently, I'm forecasting about 78 to 79 degrees. And we potentially could be breaking records across uh, the DMV. So we'll watch for that. Now, limited sunshine throughout the weekend because we're watching two major storm systems that will allow spotty showers to pick up for your Saturday and Sunday. So waking up tomorrow morning, uh, we're actually going to be watching our temperatures uh, starting off in the lower 50s in most spots. By 9 a.m., we're in the lower 60s. Hey, let's time out these stray showers that will be impactful for your weekend, guys. All right, Janessa, thank you. And we are, like she said, enjoying some unusually warm weather for November. For November, So excited about this. Time couldn't be better since daylight saving time is coming to an end this weekend. Now, we talked to businesses at the Spectrum Town Center in Gaithersburg that are so glad their customers can take advantage of the outdoors. That's where we find our Montgomery County reporter, Cheyenne Corrin, joining us live. Cheyenne, you're having a great time out there. I am having a blast thus mean. I mean, how can I not? What a beautiful weekend we have ahead of us. And I mean, this is above normal temperatures for November and businesses I spoke to say that it feels like the universe is finally working in their favor. They've been through so much throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, and they say that this seems like a chance to make up for lost time. Take a listen. To me, that sounds awesome. <laughs> like, it's just, you can't, you can ask for a nicer weather in November. Enjoying the warm weather while it lasts. The manager of Barking Mad Cafe says last week they thought about closing the patio, but by the looks of it, outdoor dining is here to stay a little longer. Winter is like, it really hurts our businesses because people are afraid to eat inside and sit close to each other, but that's what our patios are for. So the fact that we can extend it a little longer due to the weather, uh, it really helps. Gaithersburg Gym Fitness Edge MD has a competition planned for Saturday. Their owner, Tunji Kelly, says he couldn't have asked for better weather and hopes it'll bring even more people out than expected. Thank God, I definitely thought it was going to be cold. I thought it was going to be rainy, potential snow. I mean, I was not expecting it to be this nice and um, it allows us so much more flexibility to get outside and do everything that we want and also creates safety for everyone. And while everyone is loving this weather, some still are hoping for a traditional DMV holiday season. I've always stayed in the DC area just because like I love the seasons. And so if it like if it's still warm during Thanksgiving and around Christmas time, then I'll be a little bit annoyed. But for now, I'll take it. And as you just saw in some of those videos in my story, this entire area of the Spectrum Town Center was packed earlier, so I can only imagine what the weekend is going to look like. The cafe behind me, they actually said that they are busy preparing because they have so many bottomless mimosa brunch reservations. And also Fitness Edge MD said they are expecting almost 200 people to come out tomorrow for their competition. So it's a great weekend to go outside, enjoy, and of course show some love to your local businesses. I'm live in Montgomery County, Maryland. I'm Cheyenne Karen for DC news now. All right, Cheyenne, thank you. And also tonight, investigators say they're still trying to understand why a Maryland teacher falsely reported a school stabbing that escorted her class through the woods and into a cafe. The strange series of events unfolded yesterday in Frederick County. Deputies were called for reports of a mass stabbing at Green Valley Elementary. When they got there, they saw no evidence of violence, but 27 students and a teacher missing. An hour later, the class was found safe at a cafe, and tonight, investigators asking a lot of questions. She did remove her own uh, top and uh, told the kids to remove all their T-shirts or whatever, what have you, all their jewelry that would have been, uh, you know, colored to stand out in the woods or whatever. Anything of any color, they removed their, their, their watches, their shirts, whatever, I guess to travel through the wooded area from the school. Yeah, so as of right now, the teacher is in custody and also in the hospital for an emergency evaluation in a statement. 
The school said they train teachers to take students off site when they believe there is an immediate safety threat. They also added that they know the experience was upsetting and they regret that it happened. All right, some good news tonight for Virginia Metro riders. Full service returns Sunday for six stations south of Reagan National Airport. That includes Braddock Road, King Street, Old Town, and Franconia Springfield. The stations were closed for eight weeks while crews worked to connect tracks to the new Potomac Yard station. WMATA expects to open that station next year. And we continue to follow breaking news out of La Plata, Maryland. Another live look right now. Uh, after five people were found dead in a home, we'll go back to our reporter Dave Laval for another update. And you're watching DC News Now at 10. Also, when we come back, the first ever solar panels on a high school in Fairfax County, a live report on the eighth grader who made a difference. And the Supreme Court once again declines to block President Biden's student loan relief plan. You're watching DC News Now at 9. And don't get too comfortable weather-wise. We are watching a warm-up that is coming. Also, a big-time cool-down. We'll look at that forecast coming up.